What's up, everybody? Uh, so I figured I'd finally show off the haul that I got uh, up close uh, at the 2019 National in Chicago. Um, it's been a long time coming with this video, but I figure better late than never. Um, so uh, I bought a bought this uh, Topps Chrome uh, box, five Chrome autographs. And um, I did it so I can get the silver packs, which I'll show you guys once again. Uh, but I ended up uh, opening it on the, the plane ride back from Chicago. And I think the girl next to me was like, what the hell is going on with this guy? <laughs> but uh, so, of course, you get a, a bunch of, you know, base common cards. And then uh, got a ton of cards that, you know, are kind of like binder worthy, you know, like rookie cards and prism refractors and, you know, superstar cards. So it's always good to have, a, you know, some binder cards. You never know, like some of these rookies may turn out to be uh, really good players. Um, and then some of the cards that I put into top loaders. Um, so I got this uh, really cool Robin Yount and Christian Yelich. Got this uh, Michael Kop Kopech. Rookie card, looks like the 84 tops design. Uh, got this Ryan O'Hearn rookie, freshman flash. Uh, got this Glaber Torres, uh, who hit a uh, another couple of home runs last night, uh, having it a huge year. Uh, another Glaber Torres future stars card, and then I got these two cards. Um, this one of them, I think this is just the base, uh, you know, second year Torres, and then uh, the refractor. Uh, got this Juan Soto second year, and uh, got the Mike Trout. You gotta you gotta put the Mike Trout in the top loader, and then Cody Bellinger, and I got this really cool. Um, I think they call it black and white. This Jose Abreu black and white, which is really cool. Got of course uh, the show was in Chicago, so cool to get this uh, Chicago White Sox Jose Abreu card. And uh, got a gold card, but unfortunately it was Joey Ricard. <laughs> so this is numbered to 50. Um, the, so you get five autographs. Uh, the autographs that I got were pretty bad. Uh, uh, you know, I was just like, ugh. But you know what? They're all rookie cards, so you never know. Uh, so one of these guys may turn out to be decent players, but I mean, these you could literally pick these cards up for e on eBay for like five bucks. Uh, got this uh, Kevin Newman rookie. Got this Steven Duggar auto. Uh, got this Mitch Keller auto. I know he was, at, at least at one point, a, a highly touted prospect for the Pirates. Uh, then I got this refractor of Steven Gonsalves. So that is a refractor number to 499. And got this DJ Stewart uh, numbered to 250. So like I said, the autos were pretty disappointing, to be honest with you. Um, you know, if I were to open up another box of Topps Chrome, I probably would not get the autos. The jumbo box is a lot more expensive than just if you get the regular uh, box with maybe one or two autos. That's what I would do if I, if, if I were to buy another box of Topps Chrome, which I'm not. <laughs> um, the, the part of the box that was probably the best were some of the rookie cards, uh, so I landed this Kyle Tucker rookie, uh, got this uh, Ramon Laureano uh, prism refractor. This guy was having a really nice year until he got injured. Now he's on the uh, the injured list. Uh, Louis Urias uh, prism rookie. Uh, and then, of course, the two uh, Mets uh, rookies that have really, you know, um, really allowed the Mets to take off these last couple of weeks. Um Jeff McNeil and Peter Alonzo. Uh, definitely want those cards if you're busting open a, a box. And then, of course, uh, hit the Vladimir Guerrero rookie, which uh, I was happy to get. Now, the biggest hit of the box, um, at first I kind of threw it to the side, not really realizing, because I actually opened it on the plane and didn't have the ability to look up, you know, variations. And I, I guess I didn't notice, the you know, the code on the back being different. But I landed... <clears throat> both of these Acuna cards, and then literally a couple days later, I was looking up the variations, and you got to do that if you're opening up uh, Tops or Tops Chrome. 
um, I noticed that this card is a variation. In fact, it is a super short print, um, and it's a you know one of those cards that's like one in every case. So this card was actually a huge card to hit, um, and without a doubt was the best card that I hit within that uh, 2019 Topps Chrome. So I was very happy about that. So. The box turned out to be okay, uh, th thanks to this uh, this big hit of this Ronald Acuna refractor, and uh, the the codes are really small. And the, down here, the, it has a different code than the uh, than this card, so that's how you know that it, it is a short print. Some other cards I got at the show. Um, <laughs> I got this '89 Dunruss. Craig Biggio um, was everyone was open up opening up packs of like eighty seven tops and eighty nine Don Russ and uh, I opened up a pack that had a Biggio and you guys know I um, if you watch my channel I have like hundreds of these cards so why not uh, add another one to the collection so uh, there is the Craig Biggio um, been talking a lot about these uh, national silver packs uh, which I absolutely love and um, I opened up uh, the two packs. On camera, so uh, here they are once again: Jose Altuve, Nick Senzel, Ricky Henderson, Ryan Sandberg, Joe Adele, uh, Fernando Tatis rookie, Manny Machado number to fifty, and uh, this really cool Nico Horner number to twenty-five. And somebody made a comment that he is the uh, the number one prospect for the Cubs, which is really cool. Uh, he was taken in the first round of the twenty eighteen draft. So just go ahead and put that one in the background. And then, um, as I was staying in my a recap video, um, I submitted 120 cards to PSA, uh, which I who knows when I'll get them back, but uh, these uh, came along. You're supposed to also get a book bag, um, which they told me that they'd send me, which we'll see if I'll ever get. Um, but here are the promo cards uh, that they handed out. You got Honus Wagner, Christy Mathewson, uh, Joe Jackson, uh, Nap Lajoie and Ty Cobb. So throw a couple of these in the background. And um, also picked up, uh, I was walking around with uh, Mike, baseball collector, on uh, Saturday morning, morning right before he was going to fly out. And um, I don't know, I saw this for 25 bucks and I was like, why not for 25 bucks to have a uh, J.D. Martinez and what's become sort of an iconic set, the 2011 Topps Update set, uh, just because of the, all the big rookies, including the Mike Trout rookies in there. Um, why not? For 25 bucks in a PSA 10. So I'll just put that one in the background. And then, of course, uh, my, oh, one of my favorite cards. Uh, obviously, I went over to the, uh, the PSA booth. Uh, they took a picture and then uh, put me on this uh, awesome Honus Wagner card. <laughs> Uh, so got to do the Honus Wagner. Uh, there are a couple other different options. Uh, I don't think New York was one of them. Um, so I decided to go with uh, the Honus Wagner um, uniform there with the, with the orange background. Uh, and then let's see here. We have uh, two of two, uh, the big cards that I picked up at the National. Uh, first off was uh, Rube Waddell, and I've been talking about Rube Waddell for a long time now on my channel. Uh, I think he is one of the most fascinating uh, players to ever play the game. Um, the guy is a Hall of Famer, but just imagine that, you know, what he would do, he's, he'd be pitching, and then um, in the middle of the game, there'd be a fire truck that would drive by and he would drop his glove and then go running after the fire truck. And this is like <laughs> Major League Baseball, a guy that would at, at certain points, like during seven inning games, strike out 15 batters. Imagine that, he's, he's facing 21 batters and he's striking out 15 like on a regular basis. Um, there's a, a story about him and Cy Young and Cy Young talking about it being the greatest game that he's ever pitched in, where Rube Waddell, it was a doubleheader, Rube Waddell pitched, in game, uh, pitched a save, he, he closed the game, game one, and then went on to battle Cy Young for 20 innings and ended up uh, pulling out the win and uh, pitched 20 innings in game two <laughs> and beat Cy Young. Um, the guy was, you know, 
an, an unbelievable pitcher, uh, but also just he was nuts. Like like I said, he would leave games. Sometimes he'd be go chasing after a fire truck. Sometimes he'd go to the local watering hole and he'd just be drinking beer. <laughs> Uh, he would wrestle alligators during the off season. At one point, he was bitten by a lion because I guess he was wrestling with a lion. I think he shot his friend friend's hand um, with a gun. Um, it, it, he the way he died too was just as crazy as the way he lived. Uh, you know, um, the way that he ended up dying was that he was he ended up saving a bunch of people from a flood, and. Um, then, because of that, caught pneumonia and then died on April Fool's Day. <laughs> it's just the, the guy, just the, his whole story. Like, if they ever make a major motion picture about this guy, it'll be one of the most fascinating movies of all time. So I'm, I'm hoping that they do that one day because I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by this guy. Um, but, uh, I, you know, the, the, the cool thing about this also is I, I was uh, walking around. Um, so I was at the Net54 conference with uh, Andrew Nuff said cards. And uh, I forget why, but he was showing that you have to remember that there are millions, literally millions of cards at the show. And on Friday, I had basically asked to maybe see four or five cards because I don't like to waste dealers time. Like if, if, if I'm not interested, I'm not going to have them take it out of the case and give me a price. Um, cause I really, I knew what I wanted, you know, and I've talked about, you know, I wanted the Ty Cobb and the Cap Anson, but I, I saw this Rube Waddell, I had him take it out of the case. And later that night at the net, net, net 54 conference, I'm sitting with, uh, Andrew Nuffsack cards and he's showing me a couple of pictures, maybe three or four pictures. And one of the pictures that he shows me is this exact same card. Um, and I'm like, what are the odds that you pull out the, you know, to show, show me a card that, you know, we both looked at of all of the millions of cards, uh, that we saw at the national. And I was like, well, it's fate. I got, I got to get this card. And, um, if you look at it as beautifully centered, I mean, it has a ton of eye appeal. Um, it's definitely a four. Like I have no problem with the grade, especially if you look at the back. Uh, it's got some staining and it's way off center on the back. Uh, and even in the front, you know, the, the rounded corners, but man, oh man, I mean, just with a little bit of distance, it has a phenomenal eye appeal, uh, which is why I think the two of us were both like, wow, that's a really, really nice four. Uh, and so I made a deal with the, with the dealer and got it and i um, very excited to finally add the Rube to my collection. Um, and then finally, um, just wanted to show you guys this card up close. Uh, not the King Kelly. I, I had owned the King Kelly. Bought that a while ago. And uh, by the way, I saw Andrew Nuff said cards has uh, the King Kelly, I believe, in a four. Um, but I absolutely love the Goodwin Champion set. It is probably my favorite, one of my favorite sets of all time. Definitely my favorite uh, set from the 19th century. And um, in my opinion... Uh, this card that I'm about to show you guys is the most important card of the 19th century. Uh, and that is the N162 Goodwin Champions 1888 Cap Anson. Uh, and this one is in a PSA 5. So I've, I've had this um, King Kelly for a while and I've been dying to add uh, the Cap Anson to this collection. Uh, just to put them side by side here. Look at that. <laughs> um, the cool thing about, you know, this this uh, Cap Anson is uh, not an easy card to find. Uh, there are only 63 graded by PSA, uh, and 17 of which are a 5 or higher. So there's only 17 graded by PSA that are a 5 or higher. So, I mean, in terms of how many are graded out there, maybe 100. You know, if you, if you also factor in SGC. Um the highest version in a PSA is an eight. So, um, yeah, good luck finding a, a card that looks as nice as this one. Um, I would love to see like somebody that really knows the 19th century. In my opinion, this is the most uh, most important card of the 19th century. Um, he is the greatest player of the 19th century. You can maybe argue that Cy Young um, is the greatest player of the 19th century, but the only problem with that argument is that. Um, he 
most of most of his career was actually in the 1900s. Uh, Cy Young pitched, I believe, to 1911. Whereas Cap Anson, all 27 years of his career were in the you know the 1800s. Um, if you look at Baseball Reference, he has 3,400 hits, um, and when he retired, uh, he led all of baseball in at bats, games, hits doubles, RBIs, and runs scored. So he led all of baseball in almost every statistical category when he retired from baseball. And um, I don't know, just uh, in my opinion, uh, one of the uh, the coolest baseball cards you can own. <laughs> so I'm really, really happy to add it to my collection. Um, great eye appeal. Um, and here is the back. So you can see here there's all kinds of it's not just baseball there's the the fo first ever football card is is in is in this set a uh, card that I've always wanted to I who knows I may have to own that one day but you can see there are bicyclists there are oarsmen um very interesting set um and I think what sets it apart is that it's uh you know a a color set. Um, the the old judge cards are all black and white. So anyway, uh, I think that's all I have. Um, so um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I just added one more card to the collection, and I'm probably gonna do a updated top fifty very soon. Um, and that's all I have for today. So thanks everybody for watching. I will talk to you later. Peace.